Unit cells, what do we got there? Little cubes. That's what I'm right. Little cubes. Yeah. That's good. Say again. Least volume structure. Least volume structure. How about a um. Just a repeatable structure. It's the smallest. What about the lattice points? Wait, say that again. Uh, the lattice point is the area in which the probability is finding out on the columns. It's the center point of all the atoms that are within the lattice structure. So for, um, you have the lattice structures, usually corners. Um, if it's face centered, then you'd have them there. And then if it's body centered, you'd have another one there. Um, so crystal matrix, what's that? Something like that. I just take a whole bunch of lattice, a whole bunch of unit cells and put them together, and then I end up with a crystal matrix structure. Um, what does adding another substance do to the properties of a metal? And how is this accomplished in terms of interstitial sites? So I add one metal to another metal, what happens? So that first prop, that first metal is going to take on some of the properties of that second metal, and vice versa. It'll uh, they'll start behaving a little bit more like each other. When we're talking about something like brass, the copper is really soft and is really good at not rusting. The zinc is really rigid and rusts fairly easily. And when you mix the two of those things together, you get brass, and you get something that's not as soft as copper. So it's a little more usable as a building material, and it's uh, not as corros it's not as um, easily corroded as zinc is. Um, so the when we're talking about interstitial sites, what are we talking about? Spaces in between. How about substitution, atom atomic substitution? Are you okay with that? <clears throat> so if I've just got copper, they all fit together in some particular unit cell fashion. And then if some of those coppers have been swapped out with some zincs, then I've just substituted an atom inside of there and different properties are now being exhibited by, uh, by that stuff that used to be copper. Does that make sense? Is that the part that shows like all the little spheres in like square shape and then like there are three different types of, yeah, of defects. Size, One was size, same size, big size, or a hole. Yeah. Um, ionized salt, what's that? Okay, so it's just uh, let's do this. How about uh, so 
So we've got substituted iodine in there. So instead of having just a bunch of NaCl, we've got some NaI. Um, does that mess with the crystal matrix? It does, right? Because the iodine is considerably larger than the chlorine is. Is it important in iodized salt? No, no. I'm not asking if iodine is important to be putting in salt, because it is, so we don't get goiters. I'm asking, if is it a big deal that the iodine is in the crystal matrix structure with the sodium chloride? It's definitely changing the shape, but do we care is my question. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to use table salt to build something. Right? So I don't care if it's got interstitial defects that cause the structure to be stronger or weaker. None of that stuff matters. I'm only going to have these tiny little crystals. If they have interstitial defects in them, who cares? Because the second they hit the water and whatever I throw it in or in my mouth or in my stomach, it's going to dissolve anyway. They're going to be disconnected. Um, why is the x-ray crystallography used? Why is it x-ray instead of gamma ray crystallography or radar crystallography? Gammas are smaller. That's it. The, uh, the wavelength, the wavelength of an x-ray is about the size of an atom. Why is that important with the crystallography? We need more than that. We need constructive interference, right? We need the waves to add to each other. And the waves won't add to each other if, if I'm using radio waves, I mean, the wave could be a meter long. That, that's not going to be helpful. There's going to be no, uh, there's going to be no constructive interference when the waves diffract. So I need the wave to be about the same size as the atom. You, you adjust the wavelength of the x-ray that you use. X-rays are definitely a, um, a spectrum. So when I say blue, what comes to mind? Does that color come to mind? How about that color right there? So that color, blue is a, a wide range of different colors. The same situation happens with x-rays. X-rays doesn't mean one kind of radiation. It's a span of radiation that gets this name, like visible or infrared or microwaves. So you would shoot the x-rays in there, and then you would adjust the actual length of the different x-rays to get to the one that you want that will do constructive interference. Those dots that we saw and that picture that we saw that was uh, from Rosalind Franklin, you don't get those if, without the constructive interference. And so if you don't have wavelengths that are approximately the same size as the atoms, then you don't get, um, you don't get that constructive interference. Uh, how many fit inside the CCP unit cell? Sure, go for it. I agree with you. I agree with you that it was kind of hard to follow. Um, what, yeah. What does the x-ray do to your body if you don't have it? Yeah. Break bonds. Yes. yes. So it doesn't break these bonds or like these intercellular just mess with that? Oh, oh no, it will, but not it. It's uh, a good way to talk about this. As far as you go, when you get hit, not every single time will it cause an ionization. And then even if it does cause an ionization, most of the time when you get an ionization, a bond breaking, the thing either just dies and it's not really a big deal or it goes back together and it's not a big deal. Um, with this, there's enough of it that it doesn't matter if some of it breaks. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, next term will be very, very explicit about radiation and what it, what it entails. 
Um, so we can fit four atoms inside that that cell, and it's special because it's a uh, 72% atom, and only, uh, no, 74%, sorry. 74% atom and 26% space, empty space. So it's uh, most dense. So when we're looking at the atoms like gold and osmium and uh, lead and whatnot, they're, they're not going to be simple cubics. They're going to be um, uh, CCP versions of their unit cells. Um, so in this Pythagorean theorem, since the... Uh, since we're looking at the atoms unit cell, the atoms are in the corners, but there are also atoms here, 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 and here on the faces. And the problem with that is, uh, with the simple unit cell, I just, I just uh, checked one end, uh, like a corner from one, one lattice point to another lattice point, and that would tell me what the width of an atom is because the atoms were touching each other, right? I got a center, it goes halfway across the unit cell, the other one picks up the end and goes the other halfway, so I got a whole atom there. The problem with this is there is a gap here, right? This atom that's in a corner and this atom that's in a corner, they're not touching each other. So what is touching each other? Um, this atom and this center atom and that atom right there form a, uh, a continuous touching of atoms, so we end up with... Oops. All right, that's terrible. Let's see if I can actually draw this. Okay, that's not awful, but it's pretty bad. So A and B and C. And so what I have here is a radii, two radii, and another radii. So four radii or two total atoms diameter. So then if I know A and I know B and I know C, then I can actually just do Pythagorean theorem to calculate out what the um, radii of a particular atom is with this different structure that isn't simple cubic. Um, examples of all three states of matter and solutions. What do we got? Gas. Say again? No, carbon dioxide wouldn't be a wouldn't be a solution. It would be a pure substance. Air, Air, sure. Multiple substances, homogeneous mixture, sure. How about uh, liquid? What? Sure. And uh, solid. about something like bronze or brass or steel or some other alloy. Okay. Um, and the fundamental driving forces, what do we got? So if the amount of energy goes down, nature's happy about that. And if the amount of chaos goes up, nature's happy about. So if chaos goes up, what's that, that's that, that saying about, I can't really see that. What's that saying about um, uh, concentration? No, concentration doesn't go up. If it's more chaotic, then stuff is not concentrated. So chaos would be somebody's got uh, a salt shaker and they smash the salt shaker on the ground. What did I just do to the concentration of the salt? Dispersed it. It's more chaotic. Nature's happy with that. So if you can get stuff to disperse, become less concentrated based off of substance or lose energy that it has, then that's what nature wants. And making solutions uh, does that. They lose energy and they uh, become more chaotic because... Um, we uh, this one is from last term enthalpy and the S is entropy 
because you know two words that start with e should definitely have symbols h and s that that makes sense the only the only thing i can say is at least this has an h in it 